Okay. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Whew, okay. Critical race theory. I, I just want to be clear. I'm going I'm to go to the end real quick because I know that that was brought up. Critical race theory. Is that typically taught K through 12? Yes or no? No. Okay. All right. So we can stop with the nonsense because K through 12 was not teaching critical race theory, at least in this country. I can't talk about what happens in other countries, but in our country, K through 12 is not learning critical race theory, just for those that are unfamiliar. In addition to that, we just heard about AFT and what they're advocating for. And I know that there was a comment that you made as it relates to discipline. Um, and how that's something AFT should be advocating for so that teachers can be safer. Is, is that correct? Am I characterizing what you said correctly? Um, I believe that both the NEA and the AFT should endorse policies that keep educators safe. Yeah. Okay. Let me ask you a quick question. Actually, I would like for all three of you to answer this question. It's just a yes or no. We'll start at this end. Uh, when you were growing up and going through school, did you ever have to go through an active shooter drill? Yes or no? No. 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 Oh, okay. All right. So can we agree that guns being kept out of schools may be one of those things that could keep not only teachers safe, but also students safe? Yes or no? Yes. 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 Okay. Thank you. So I, I do want to touch on a few things that Ms. Ocasio-Cortez talked about um, because I, I don't really know the breadth of your understanding or experiences, but to give a little clarity to the district that I come from, 20% of my district live at or below poverty. And um, I do come from an urban district. I do have a majority minority district. I know that we've talked about DEI and diversity and uh, I find that when I'm here, I am constantly fighting to make sure that I can break through the noise and the stereotypes that exist around not only my kiddos in my district, but just my constituents. And one of the things that maybe some of you have never experienced, I don't know, is the fact that one of the leading reasons that students in my district don't show up to school is because they are poor because some of them are homeless. We found that there were children that didn't go to school because they didn't have clean clothes. That is something that certain people don't have to worry about. And they found that if they brought in washing machines so that kids wouldn't make fun of them because they had clean clothes, that they would show up. These are things that maybe in a more affluent district they may not need money for. So while one of my colleagues talked about how much investment has to go into some of these school districts in the inner city, I do want to make it clear that there are different obstacles that my kiddos deal with. In addition to the fact that I practice criminal defense work prior to coming into the legislative realm. And in my district, I have the highest incarcerated zip codes in the entire state. What that means is that sometimes I have children that go home and they don't have parents to go home to. Or if they are going home to parents, um, their parents may be involved in things that aren't necessarily the best things for kids to be around. And so as it's already been stated, sometimes the safest space is at school for some of these children. And what is so annoying to me is that we debate whether or not we will invest in our futures. As far as I'm concerned, there is no better investment than in our children. Because if we are going to make sure that this country continues on, it's not going to start by investing in people that look like me or of my age. It starts with making sure that there's a foundation. And I just want to say that I am thankful for those teachers that decided to go in, even when they were under-resourced, even given of their own resources, to make it happen. I lost teachers in my district during the pandemic because they literally risked their lives in the midst of a pandemic to show up because they love those kids that much. Because I can tell you, the pay is not there. Teachers aren't getting rich. Maybe professors, but not teachers. 
And so the fact is, I've talked to my school districts. They were able to take advantage of the extra money that was given to them, but guess what? They still had gaps that they needed to fill. And the reason that I brought up gun violence is number one, it's a safety issue, but also as it relates to the mental health. Children nowadays know where they need to go in case somebody comes in, they're looking for the closet. That is no way for kids in America to live. So we need to make sure that we put kids first. Thank you so much and with that I will yield.